Hello my fellow VSGers, this is Jote Saint, along with Frankensleeve, bringing you another quick fact, frequently asked questions. And this frequently asked question is, what are the top changes to expect post-op? And my top changes list includes getting cold easier. One of the first things I noticed around February was that my hands and arms got cold a whole lot easier. I, I was down 40 pounds and the fat layer on my arms and hands was much thinner so the wind cut through my skin pretty easy and I had started I had started wearing uh, long sleeve jackets and gloves whenever I would go from my car to the house or from my car to my office. The second thing I began to notice was I lost my taste for sweets. Uh, they just weren't as satisfying anymore. I could still enjoy the flavor, but it, it just didn't give me the satisfaction I had anymore. The, uh, the first week of post-op was kind of strange. Uh, I was very angry at the world. No particular thing I could point out, but just I'd go to bed angry and I'd wake up angry. Just mad, mad, mad. And that went away after the first week. And at the same time, at night, I was having these nightmares for the entire first week, and it was the same nightmare over and over again. Uh, I was living in this post-apocalyptic world, and I was being interviewed by some group of people to uh, decide whether or not I was going to be part of the group or not part of the group, and if I was part of the group, whether I was going to be a fighter or whether I was going to be part of the, the research group that was rebuilding society. And it was a seemed like it was a pretty short nightmare, but it was the same thing over and over again. Those people asking me questions and trying to figure out what group I was going to be in or if I was going to be allowed back, allowed into the group at all. Uh, one of the other important changes you can expect post-op is to be intolerant of a whole lot of foods for, for about the first six months. So you have to be very careful introducing new foods into your diet. Uh, and when you do introduce a new food into your diet, be sure and only try one new food at a meal at a time. That way if your food does disagree with your stomach, you'll be able to identify it quickly. Uh, my energy levels were low for the first six months. I was very sluggish and uh, didn't feel like doing much more than going from work back to the house. But it seems like at month nine, my energy levels pick back up again and I have more energy than ever. One of the uh, stranger things was that my knees got kind of bony and now they bang together at night when I'm laying on my side. So I usually have to sleep with either a pillow or a, uh, uh, the comforter between my knees so that I can lay on my side. A really big change and an embarrassing change for a lot of people is the amount of gas they're expelling. Gas, gas, gas. You will become a, a gas master when you first come out of surgery and for the first few months. Uh, I noticed that the, I was passing gas quite a bit the, uh, the, in, in volume and in, in loudness. There, uh, lots of people uh, do bring this up over and over again because it's very common. At first it's the gas that they pumped into your stomach to keep your body inflated while they're having, doing the surgery on you and then you start having the gas because of the liquid protein drinks you're drinking and then you're also eating more uh, vegetables and you're eating more uh, fibrous food so your gas levels will be going up quite a bit. Uh, some people have suggested using Beano to help with the, the gas problem and other people just roll with it. And there's another one, uh, the, the double-edged sword of constipation and diarrhea. At first, for the first month or so, there's a, a real problem or potential problem with diarrhea because the first few weeks you're on a liquid diet and then you go to a puree diet before finally being allowed onto a full a solid food diet so diarrhea is is pretty common for those first few weeks and then once you go from the uh, liquid food stage to the pureed food stage to solid foods then you run into the problem of constipation uh, and that continues on, the constipation issue, if you're not careful, because the uh, meals center around protein primarily, which is supposed to be 
about 50% of your of your meal for each meal, and then the other half is supposed to be uh, carbohydrates, preferably uh, healthy vegetables. And at first, you're eating so little that you're not getting enough di uh, fiber into your diet, so uh, many people have to uh, take laxatives either in a pill form or something in liquid form like milk of magnesia. Uh, I went through this for a while, but uh, but being an ex, ex Atkins dieter, I was I was pretty used to that anyway. But it was a problem for a while, and I at one point I didn't go for almost a week, and finally broke down and tried milk of magnesia, and milk of magnesia really does the trick, especially if you take an extra uh, dose. Like for example, mine said take two tablespoons. Well, I took three. And that third spoonful did the trick. I tell you what, I was I was ready to go after about thirty minutes. Uh, one of the other really big concerns that uh, comes up after surgery is dehydration. With the reduced stomach size and the restriction on drinking thirty minutes before a meal or after a meal, uh, and with a smaller stomach, it's it's really easy to get dehydrated because you don't notice that you're not drinking enough. So getting used to having to constantly sip on something all day long to get enough water can be a problem until you get in the habit of doing it. So I always try to get in uh, 60 to 80 ounces of water a day. I really shoot for 120, but depending on the day I may or may not be able to get it all in. Uh, something a lot of the people have talked about, but I, I have not experienced it myself, is uh, nausea or, vo or vomiting when they're uh, trying a new food. Uh, some people report that certain smells make them nauseous. Uh, I never experienced anything, anything along those lines, so I can't really comment on it. I did experience a little bit of nausea, but that was mainly because it, when I was first retraining myself to eat smaller amounts, and I didn't know how much I could hold, then I would usually wind up eating uh, an extra half spoonful or a spoonful of food, and it, I would uh, stretch my stomach a little bit, and it would make me nauseous, or, and I would start sweating, and I would just feel really uncomfortable, but I quickly trained myself how much I could eat and how fast I should eat, and you probably will too. And that brings me to the other change, and that is I no longer have that sense that I'm gradually getting fuller. Uh, that is one of the uh, hardest things I had to retrain myself on was knowing uh, when to quit eating because I would I could eat a certain amount and and not feel any sense of being full and then I could take one extra spoonful or half spoonful and suddenly I felt this poking sensation in the bottom of my throat uh, my stomach would feel stretched a little bit and I would feel very uncomfortable. So that's why it's very important to eat slowly, eat small bites at a time, and, and learn your new stomach size. Uh, eventually I I've, I've realized that I could eat about a half a cup of, of whatever I was going to be having and that was enough to uh, satiate my hunger and at the same time not enough to overstretch my stomach. So I bought these little Gladware plastic uh, containers and I, I used them for about the first six months as as my uh, food bowls and it was real easy to just top one of those off and know that I could have that much food and not have to worry about stretching my stomach. Don't get too worried about what you can't eat post-op. I see so many people posting questions about can I eat this or can I eat that post-op and what I would like to tell them the most is Post-op, you may not care about the same foods anymore. Your your taste buds may change. Uh, your whole attitude and mental outlook on food may change. And so those same foods that you're so invested in and so worried about not being able, able to eat again, you may just not care anymore. You may, you, you may be like me and uh, have a, a craving for a certain kind of hamburger and you feel like you just can't live without that food. And post-op, I'm just as happy uh, eating my beans and ground turkey meat 
as I am that hamburger. The, the, the mental outlook I have on food and the cravings for food just aren't the same anymore. And one of the changes I'm still battling mentally with is learning to eat for my stomach size and not my eyes. I know how big my stomach is and how much it will hold. And when I'm using regular size bowls or plates, I will take a spoonful of whatever I'm eating and my brain will tell me, hey, that's, that's not how much you're supposed to eat for a meal. You're supposed to eat more than that. And it's a real battle not to take that extra half spoonful and put it on the plate. And even though I do know that the smaller amount will satisfy me and, and I won't need any more, my brain will battle it out and, and say, you know, you really need to get an extra half spoon just in case this little bit doesn't fill you up. So that's one of my current battles. And one of the ways I battle that is by sticking with my little half cup size container. I know that uh, the food won't look as small if that thing is topped off. But when I put it into a, like a, another bowl I use, which is a, a two cup bowl, it, the amount of food looks very small. And my brain tells me I need to put a little bit more in there. So that's my top 10 list of changes to expect post-op. Or in this case, it's about my top 15 changes to expect post-op. And this is Jote Saint and Frankensleeve signing off from VSG Land. And keep pimping that sleeve. <laughs>